Hi friends, this video is on the January 2020 Watchtower study article number four entitled The Spirit Itself Bears Witness. This article is all about the anointed um, having the heavenly calling to rule in heaven with Christ. And I wanted to see if it is scripturally sound. So let's jump right in and take a look at the preview to the article. It says, ever since Pentecost 33 CE, Jehovah has given some Christians an amazing hope, the hope of ruling with the sun in heaven. How though do these Christians know that they have been selected for this wonderful privilege? What happens when someone receives this invitation this article is based on one that appeared in the January 2016, and it will answer those intriguing questions. So the first few paragraphs discuss what went on at Pentecost in 33 CE. Jesus had been resurrected and his followers were in the upper room. So let's take a look at paragraph two to see what it has to say. Suddenly, there is a noise from heaven, just like that of a rushing stiff breeze. The sound fills the whole house, then tongues as if of fire appear above the disciples' heads and they all become filled with the Holy Spirit. In this spectacular way, Jehovah pours out his Holy Spirit on that group. Acts 1.8. They become the first to be anointed by Holy Spirit and given the hope of ruling with Jesus in heaven. So they cite Acts chapter 1 verse 8 here to support that these first to be anointed were to rule with Jesus in heaven. And let's check this scripture out to see what it has to say and if this is the case. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, this scripture says that they are to receive power, but I don't see where it says that they are uh, given the heavenly hope of ruling in heaven. It also says that they are to be witnesses of me. But who's speaking here? Well, it's Jesus. How do we know? Let's jump back a couple of verses to see. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6, it says, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The disciples here were asking Jesus when he would restore the kingdom back to Israel. So it's Jesus speaking. So according to this trap chapter, when those in the upper room received the Holy Spirit, they would were to become followers of Jesus or witnesses of Jesus to all parts of the earth. This is very clear. But let's jump to paragraph five, moving along and see what it has to say. Whatever the case, the Apostle Paul explains what happens to all who are anointed. After you believed, you were sealed by means of him with the promised Holy Spirit, which is a token in advance of our inheritance. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 and footnote. So Jehovah uses his Holy Spirit to make it absolutely clear to these Christians that he has chosen them. In this way, the Holy Spirit is a token, a pledge or promise given to assure them that in the future, they will live forever in heaven and not on earth. Now there's several points that I wanna make clear here, but I don't want to cause confusion. So let's just proceed with determining if we can find this heavenly assurance anywhere in Watchtower cited scriptures. So we'll look up Ephesians chapter one, verses 13 and 14 and 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. These scriptures say, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. 
2 Corinthians. Now he which established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. I don't see anything or anywhere in these scriptures that they were assured that they were going to rule with Christ in heaven. But maybe there's a clue in the footnote. So let's take a look at that. It says expression explained, seal. This sealing is not made permanent until sometime before the person dies faithful or sometime before the outbreak of the great tribulation. It cites Ephesians 4.30 and Revelation 7 verses 2. So let's move on and read these cited scriptures. Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. This is interesting because Watchtower says that the Holy Spirit is God's active force, kind of like electricity, but I don't know how electricity can be grieved. That's just a thought. And let's move on to Revelation chapter 7, verses 2 and 4. It says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So this scripture in Revelation is talking about what happens during the Great Tribulation. It's different than being sealed by the Holy Spirit. It's a completely different context, so we have to remove it and ignore it from this application here. I don't see anywhere in these cited scriptures that the sealing of the Holy Spirit means that People will live forever and rule with Christ in heaven. I would like to move forward with explaining all of this. <clears throat> so Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 is saying that when we hear the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, which the gospel of salvation is all about Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, that we're sealed with the promise of an inheritance. But what is the inheritance? So let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 to find out. These scriptures say that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purchase, purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. So we've been, so we've obtained an inheritance being predestinated. Let's go to verse 5 to get a little more clarification. Ephesians 1 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Well, what does it mean to be predestinated? Because I like to look up words. I want 100% clarity so that I know that I understand. So I looked it up. Predestined means to determine an outcome or course of events in advance by divine will or fate. So the sealing, as discussed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, is to be in Christ, along with his free gift of salvation, to be joint heirs as adopted sons of God. You see, this is what it means when you're a follower of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14 talks about the redemption of the possession. And Romans 8, 23 tells us what that redemption actually is. And not only they, 
but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our body. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, looking to him for guidance and direction and trusting in him and him alone, our soul and our spirit are sealed. That's what is the sealing. But even those of us in Christ who are sealed, we still live on this earth in our sinful bodies. So our bodies have not been redeemed. We live in this earthen vessel, which is our bodies. And our bodies are prone to sin. So when Jesus returns, then our bodies will be redeemed because he, repur he purchased us when he shed his blood on the cross. It's talking about the redemption of our bodies. Being anointed and sealed with the Holy Spirit has absolutely nothing to do with doing Jehovah's will, which is what this article discusses. It has absolutely everything to do with Jesus Christ, what he did for us on the cross, how he shed his blood to redeem us, to purchase us back from death, death through sin and therefore being adopted as children of God. Hallelujah. So can we forget about Watchtower's explanation of this and look solely to scripture for absolute truth? That's what this is all about, friends. Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is a personal thing that you do. It's between you and him, between you and God. It's that, that prayer that says, I don't want to drive this, this car anymore, Jesus. Jesus, take the wheel. Take control of my life. I want to live for you. I want to be a child of God and therefore saved by grace, sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's a simple thing, friends. Do it today. I hope you enjoyed this video today. It... Um, I hope it wasn't too confusing. I did my best to lay it all out for you there and I welcome your comments. Thank you so much for watching my videos and liking and subscribing to my videos. You guys have a great day and we'll see you real soon on the other side of the screen.